Apple does pride itself on setting trends rather than following them, and the new iPhone 12 mini is a prime example of that. In a world where most phones have 6-inch or larger screens, the 5.4-inch screen of the new iPhone 12 mini really does stand out. It's aimed mainly at people who've been holding onto their older iPhone 5 or 6 era devices because they like the size, but it also might just solve a problem that you didn't even realize you had. It isn't just about size though. Apple has launched the iPhone 12 mini in India starting at 69,900 rupees, which is even higher than the iPhone 11's launch price. However, this is also the most affordable model in the new iPhone 12 range, so that has to figure into people's buying decisions. Stay with me to the end of this video to find out whether the iPhone 12 mini is right for you. And of course, while we're at it, please do remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you know whenever we post a new video. Our review of the iPhone 12 is also coming up soon, so subscribing will let you know as soon as that video drops. When you hold the iPhone 12 mini in your hand for the first time, it just makes sense. Sure, it isn't for everyone, and mainstream phones are huge because that's what sells. But I think a lot of people will feel relief and satisfaction when they see an option like this. I also think a lot of people will choose the iPhone 12 mini over the standard iPhone 12 purely because of this. With the iPhone 12 mini, there are almost no compromises except where we run into the laws of physics. The iPhone 12 mini has a smaller 2,227 mAh battery compared to 2,815 mAh for its bigger sibling. Third-party reports and teardowns have unearthed a few other details. Wireless charging is limited to 12 watts rather than 15 watts, and the bottom speaker as well as the Taptic Engine vibrator are shrunken. The iPhone 12 mini is virtually the exact same phone as the iPhone 12, just in a smaller package. We'll soon examine what this means for performance and usability. You might think that the small screen is going to feel restrictive if you're used to something more mainstream, but it really doesn't. iOS 14 scales brilliantly and everything is within reasonable proportions. Unless you need to work with huge spreadsheets or A4-sized PDFs, you won't have much trouble. Sure, full-screen video and games aren't as immersive and typing might feel a bit cramped, but if you can't have your cake and eat it too, at least now you have an option. I think these downsides are outweighed by the positives. The iPhone 12 mini is incredibly easy to use even one-handed, it's very pocketable and it's shockingly light at 133 grams. I could walk around with it in my hand and not worry about grip, I could drop it in a pocket and not have it stick out, and I could have long conversations or record videos without feeling an ache in my wrist. If you're coming from any iPhone older than the iPhone 8, you won't feel that you're losing out or going backwards. The iPhone 12 mini is physically smaller than the iPhone SE 2020, but has a larger screen, and is only slightly bigger than the original iPhone SE. Apple claims that its new ceramic shield material is four times more resilient to damage in case you drop your iPhone, which is great news considering the astronomical prices of repairs that you would have to deal with otherwise. Sadly, the screen isn't less susceptible to scratches, and I did notice several tiny nicks and a few more serious ones within a week. You might want to consider an adhesive screen protector. The display is incredibly sharp with a higher resolution and pixel density than even the iPhone 11 screen. The move to OLED panels across the lineup makes for vibrant colors and rich contrast. Apple's True Tone feature allows the screen to calibrate itself based on ambient light. Sadly, there's no always-on display mode for when this phone is in standby. You also don't get a high refresh rate panel, which is now standard on high-end Android devices, although iOS 14's animations do feel extraordinarily fluid. Speaking of iOS, you get exactly the same experience across the iPhone 12 family and plenty of older models. We've covered the best hidden features of iOS 14 along with the best iOS 14 features for India in other videos, so do be sure to check those out iOS doesn't have as many bells and whistles as many custom Android skins. For example, you can't run multiple instances of some apps, and you don't get as many UI customization options. However, the experience is very smooth, and you do get Apple's commitment to privacy and security. You can also reasonably expect major version updates for at least three years, likely more. We've talked about the display, but sound quality is also worth a mention. The iPhone 12 mini can get quite loud, and the stereo effect with the earpiece and bottom firing speaker is fairly natural. The bass is thin, but the sound doesn't distort and is surprisingly rich overall. I did also test the iPhone 12 mini's IP68 rating by tossing it into a swimming pool several times and even using the cameras underwater. It remained in perfect working order after sitting at about a 1.5 meter depth for up to a minute at a time, which is well within Apple's threshold of 6 meters for up to 30 minutes. 
Practically speaking though, the shrunken body does result in some compromises. First off, let's talk about battery life. With a physically smaller battery, it shouldn't be a surprise that the iPhone 12 mini is rated for the lowest runtime in the range. I found that the iPhone 12 mini could just about last through one full day if I was using the cameras a lot, playing games for about an hour, streaming some music and checking web feeds every so often. Our HD video loop test ran for 14 hours 11 minutes which isn't bad but definitely lower than today's average. You will want to charge this phone overnight each night. Apple's decision to stop bundling adapters with new iPhones is perhaps understandable, but the lightning cable that you get in the box has a Type-C plug, and I for one did not have a spare Type-C adapter lying at home. I wound up using an older lightning cable and adapter that I had lying around. Now I suspect that a lot of people will be in the same boat, and that means we don't get the benefit of 20 watt fast charging. Now this is even more frustrating than last year when Apple used to bundle a 5 watt adapter in the box with brand new premium iPhones. The second issue with cramming so much high-end hardware into such a small space is heat. There's no doubt that the iPhone 12 mini gets noticeably warm when running heavy games or tests for a while. Even taking photos and videos can make the SoC run at a high clock speed. The phone didn't get stressed out too much or become unable to perform smoothly at any point with ordinary usage during this review, including with heavy games such as Asphalt 9 Legends and Call of Duty Mobile. The two rear cameras and single front camera on the iPhone 12 mini are exactly the same as what you get on the larger iPhone 12 and in fact you also get pretty much the same features and capabilities as you would with the iPhone 12 Pro which costs nearly twice as much. Colors tend to be almost clinically neutral with no artificial boosting to make them seem more vivid. It was sometimes a little hard to verify that focus was locked but results are absolutely spectacular if your subject is isolated with the background far behind it. The iPhone 12 mini was at its absolute best when capturing close-ups with superb depth of field and crisply defined foreground subjects. Daytime exposures were spot on, textures were crisp and detail was often surprisingly precise. The wide-angle camera does a great job as well and distortion is minimal. Portrait mode recognizes people and animals. You might have some luck with other objects but don't expect great edge detection. You do need to be at the right distance and very often you can get perfectly crisp results in the default photo mode without even bothering. Nighttime photography is where the iPhone 12 mini really excels. Night mode can deliver some truly phenomenal results and being able to use it with the wide angle and front cameras is highly satisfying. The phone usually needs to be held still for 1-3 to three seconds but you can push this all the way up to 29 seconds which only makes sense if you're using a tripod. I was able to capture entire landscapes with cleanly defined areas of light and dark even in the distant background. Where other phones produced only blurs, the iPhone 12 mini could capture unknowingly crisp detail even when it seemed as though there was no light around. With indoor lighting, some night mode shots looked like they could have been taken in the daytime. Video is similarly crisp both in the daytime and at night. Motion is extremely smooth at 4K as well as 1080p, though there's a noticeable difference in stabilization when switching between the primary and ultra-wide cameras. There's no shimmer or artifacting whatsoever even when recording while walking at night. Low light videos were also exceptional, though the wide angle camera took noisier, grainier footage when there wasn't much ambient light. Slow mo video capture goes up to 240fps at 1080p and is just as crisp as regular video. iOS offers loads of editing tools and you can decide how much of each clip plays at normal speed and when exactly the slow mo effect should kick in. The front camera is just as good as the rear ones. Selfies have excellent detail and faces are exposed well even in weak light. Night mode kicks in automatically when needed as expected. The new iPhone 12 mini offers top-end hardware and features including an excellent OLED screen, fantastic cameras and the industry-leading A14 Bionic SoC. You don't lose anything if you choose the iPhone 12 mini over its larger sibling. You get the same construction quality, IP68 rating, software and accessory ecosystem. In fact, there's a huge overlap with the much more expensive iPhone 12 Pro in terms of capabilities. Battery life isn't great and performance might be thermally constrained in some extreme cases such as benchmark stress tests. The screen and speakers aren't as engaging when watching videos and playing games. If these seem like factors that will affect you even a few years down the line, it might be worth looking at the larger models. Frankly, I think a lot of people will be fine with this considering the convenience, ease of use and flagship level experience that the iPhone 12 mini delivers. This is going to be an excellent upgrade option for anyone still clinging to an iPhone 5 or 6 because of their size. Now, as the most affordable member of the 2020 family, the iPhone 12 mini is also likely to become the default choice for many. It costs 10,000 rupees less than the iPhone 12 and a whopping 50,000 rupees less than the iPhone 12 Pro despite offering many of the same features, which means the value proposition is undeniable. That's it for our review of the new iPhone 12 mini. 
The iPhone 12 review is also coming up soon, so do stay tuned and subscribe to Gadgets 360. Thanks for watching.